Hello guys, Grumpy. Welcome back to another Feed the Beast tutorial. Today we're going to be covering some advanced power concepts. What we're going to do is use red power logic gates to control an industrial blast furnace. And so we have a problem and then we have a solution and we're going to use red power to logic gates to, to automate the solution. So first of all, what's the problem? Well, the problem is an industrial blast furnace requires 128 EU per tick to function. Now, we may not have enough power to power that thing up. If we give it 64U per tick, it's not a deal where it's going to run at half speed. It's a deal where this is going to suck the power down. It's going to go off to the Never Never Land, and you will never get any product out of it. And by the way, during this tutorial, we're going to be uh, processing silicone cells. Um, these have a 50 second cycle time. That'll be important in a little while. So, anyway, here's how we can run this thing. We won't have much electricity. If we come over here, I have two advanced solar panels. Now these things right now they're charging up and uh, if there was a demand on the power grid these things will actually output 32 EU per tick until the storage drains. Once the storage drains these things will actually only output 8 EU per tick so we have a very small power grid. But that is actually enough to run the industrial blast furnace. What we have to do is store all this electricity inside of an MFE. MFE can output 120 EU per tick so basically what we will do is we'll let this thing charge up till it's full then we'll place a wire down here and for 50 seconds long enough for this thing to cook something and then we'll come over here and bust the cable like that so that's a pretty cool solution it has a drawback though you have to babysit it so um, you don't have much electricity this is a great way to run the industrial blast furnace but once again you have to babysit it so how do we get around that? Well, we're going to um, build a red power logic circuit that's going to actually uh, make and break that connection for us. And um, so that's going to be a lot easier on us because what would happen if we just do it the way I showed you with just by placing the cable and breaking it? Um, what ends up happening is you have to be at your house to do that. So if you're off caving, this industrial blast furnace, you can't leave it running because it just sucks the power down and you'll never get any product out of it. Here's the problem with this industrial blast furnace. Um, let's say you give it electricity. This progress bar is going to start moving. Let's say it gets uh, to halfway, and all of a sudden it loses power just for a split second. Uh, the recipe will reset. So basically, during, anytime during that 50 seconds, if you run out of electricity, um, all the electricity you've, you've already put into the machine just goes off in a never never land. So you have to constantly, you have to be able to supply this thing with a continuous. Uh, supply of electricity for 50 seconds to, to make this and so anyway let's go ahead and do this now I'm gonna go ahead and break this connection because while I'm building the circuit I don't want the thing to run okay let's bust this first of all I'm gonna show you what you're gonna need first thing you're gonna need is an EU splitter cable a piece of redstone some red alloy wire a knot gate and a state cell. Now these three on the right are going to require red alloy furnace because they're part of the red power 2 mods. I think just about everything in red power requires a red alloy furnace. It's not hard to make just letting you know. But anyway the EU splitter that's the first thing we want to place but let's go ahead and put all this down here in a hot bar. There's not much to this circuit design so there we go there's our EU splitter. Now what this thing does is it makes and breaks the connection for us. So this thing's actually going to be switching the electricity off and on. Next thing we want is a piece of redstone. And then we want to extend it out with some red alloy wire. Now the reason we have to put redstone or redstone down here is because this red alloy wire and this E splitter cable are two different mods and they do not these two particular blocks do not interface to one another. But they both interface to redstone. So the redstone wire will allow the red alloy wire to interface to the EU splitter cable. Next we want to come over here. Now, here's something not everybody may know, but uh, all the industrial craft storage devices, the MFE, the Batbox, the MFSU, they can output a redstone signal. Uh, you do this with this button here. It's got all kinds of settings. I won't go over all of them. There's emit if partially full. So, so if this thing has any EU stored in it at all, it'll emit a redstone signal. Click it again, emit if empty. So if it's MFE was completely drained, it put out a redstone signal. All the settings are self-explanatory. I won't go over all of them. So I'm just going to go over, I'm just going to set the one we need. We want emit if full. 
So when this MFE is completely charged, like it is right now, it will output a redstone signal. So next we're going to bring some red alley wire off that. Now we want to place red alley wire on the side because if we place it just on the ground, if you look right there, there's a gap, they won't actually connect. So we have to hold down the shift key and right click the MFE and that will place the red alley wire on the side. If you don't hold down the shift key, you'll open the interface like that. So as you can see right there, this red alley wire is energized over here. It's not. So this thing is in fact emitting a redstone signal. So next we're going to want our state cell. We're going to place that right there. And we want a red alley wire coming off that. Finally, we want a not gate. And there we go. There's the circuit. It is completely built. If I place this... Uh, uh, glass fiber cable here to run but let me go over what this how this thing works first um, the state cell right here is basically like a timer when it receives a signal it puts out a signal but it's timed once this thing actually goes low in other words once this MFE starts draining this thing right here will start counting down and it's fully adjustable now here's one thing to note and I've actually crashed the game a couple times recording this. this is like take eight on this video but you right click the state cell to adjust the time but make absolutely sure you have nothing in your hand if I had something in my hand and I right click that thing it'll crash the game and have to start over so basically you can adjust the timer here now just for demo purposes here we're gonna set it pretty low we're gonna set it for like uh, six seconds and so basically what happens is this thing right here the state cell is putting out a signal but uh, the logics inverted in other words the state cell is on right now we want it to uh, when the state cells on we want the industrial blast furnace to be on so we have to invert the logic because this EU splitter right now it's on so it's or I'm sorry it's the circuits closed so it's it's gonna allow electricity to flow through if this line went high it's gonna turn the EU splitter off so it's kinda backwards finally let's place this down here we're gonna see it in operation now you instantly saw this thing switch off the reason it switched off is because uh, it started draining. We don't have enough electricity to keep this MFE charged. So the instant this circuit started working, this thing drained. And you're going to see it start pulsing. It's actually pulsing. You saw it once right there. But um, basically what happens is when this thing's high, the state cell kicks on. Let's watch it. And that turned the circuit on. So now we got the industrial blast furnace running. And it'll run for six seconds and we'll see it switch here in a second there we go it switched off we'll come over here and look at it and let's see what actually happens well it's like I told you if this thing during this 50 second cycle if this thing ever loses electricity watch it there say charging up and after six seconds we just lost our progress so that's what I'm saying you have to let this thing run for the full 50 seconds so that's why we have to build this circuit and switch the power off and on and all this so um Normally, here's what you would do is you'd set the time to whatever the recipe calls for plus like one second. So this thing right here, the silicone cell, the recipe calls for 50 seconds. So that's how long it takes to make a silicone plate. So what I like to do is run or set this state cell over here to um, 51 seconds. So we'll come over here and do that. So now this thing's actually going to run. I just I don't even know if you need the one second, but I just put in there just as a, a precaution. But um, basically the state cell is going to turn industrial blast furnace on for 51 seconds long enough for it to cook something and then uh, it'll switch the blast furnace off once the very instant the MFE is full again it'll switch it back on so it it's automating it for us so we, we never have to babysit the power now you might be wondering how fast this thing actually go in other words it's uh, yeah the recipe says it cooks for 50 seconds but you got to take into consideration uh, the amount of time it takes to recharge the MFE. So if you're trying to cook a stack and you want to know how long it's going to take to cook the stack, well, you got to take into consideration um, um, the downtime. So the downtime is actually determined by how much power you're feeding into it. So um, right now we're actually only feeding in 80, or 16 EU per tick because we got two of these. If we were feeding in, um, let's say we were feeding in 64 EU per tick, that math's a little easier. Um, the industrial blast furnace will actually only be able to run um, about half the time. 
if you average it out over an hour's time. So let's say let's say this thing can cook a, a whole stack of 64 silicone plates. I'm making a number up right now. Let's say let's say this industrial blast furnace is capable of cooking 64 silicone plates per hour. If we feed it 64 EU per tick into the MFE, um, it will actually only be able to generate 32 items per hour. In other words, since you're only feeding it half the power it needs, it will only run at half speed. So here's another problem within a solution. Let's say, for example, you do have enough electricity. Like over here, I have uh, all these advanced solar panels. Each one of these produces 8 EU per tick, but there's like a ton of them. So they're actually generating well over 120 EU per tick. But let's say this is our power grid, but it has to power the whole house. So it's powering macerators, induction furnaces, and all this different stuff. And you don't want the whole full 120 EU per tick going to the industrial blast furnace. You still want to limit it. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Now these things right here only put out these advanced solar panels. Um, they only put out 8 EU per tick. That's the packet size 8 EU. So, um, you don't have to use any transformers or anything, but what you want to do is you want to throw down a bat box just like that. And let's get rid of these because uh, this is our power grid for this demonstration. Okay, now this bat box puts out 32E per tick. That's the packet size, and so um, it only, uh, only put out one packet per tick. So it's only going to feed a quarter of the power you need for the industrial blast furnace to run. So what happens is the industrial blast furnace is only going to run 25% of the time. So one bat box will allow the industrial blast furnace to run at quarter speed. If we run run it at half speed, we put a second one down. Just like that. So now our industrial blast furnace uh, is running at half speed. We could put a third one. Um, that's not a blast furnace. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not a bat box. That will allow us to run at three quarter speed. And if you want to run at full speed, just don't put any of them. So, if you, there we go. Put one for quarter speed, two for half speed, three for three quarter speed. So, it's a pretty cool way to control the amount of power going to an industrial blast furnace. So, early on in the game, when you're don't have much electricity you can use these techniques to manage the power this first thing I'll show it shows you will allow you to automate the process so that you don't have to babysit the industrial blast furnace cook something and then this down here will allow us to control how fast the industrial blast furnace actually runs so I hope you found this helpful if you enjoyed it and you found it informative please give it a like it really helps my channel um, the more comments and the likes the video gets the more YouTube is likely to suggest and helps my channel and as long as my channel's doing good, I'll keep making videos. Um, but anyways, Grumpy, we will see you next time. Also, let me know how the mic sounds now. I've turned the volume up. Let me know if it's too loud, too quiet, that kind of thing. But I appreciate all you guys watching. And by the way, I recently hit 4,000 subs. So I can't remember if I thanked you guys. But I want to thank you again for subscribing and watching and commenting and whatever you're doing, sharing. Um, but appreciate it. We'll see you next time.